and he was sitting up yesterday. What's so, this? Good. Yeah, we, he should be able to come home today or tomorrow, he said. Praise the but, Lord. Um, remember Ron, he's from the Deliveries. And Ron's battling it with all this and, the, and, and the things that are going on. And let's pray over Ron and Kathy's car and automobile situation. <laughs> that thing fits. Uh, Nikki and Sherry Slade are still in Alabama right now. We don't know. We're doing we them with them as their I'm going to leave Tuesday. Our, our son, John, has got a little fever. No, I don't think he has a fever. He's a cough and a little headache. He missed church this morning because he knew it was getting He's sweet. The Clausens all had the flu, except Pete. Except Pete. <laughs> except Pete. So. Mm -hmm. um, baby Ezra has got COVID and they're going to have to do a transfusion on him. So he's just been, you know, in and out, but they're, they are thanking God for every victory that he has. Also, my brother Robert is still doing, he's doing chemo. So keep him with it. My brother Lawrence Angel. Last week he had a stroke. The Friday before that he had a no, the tooth around he had a heart attack. And they did a CAT scan of the brain and they could have a massive stroke at any time. Let's remember him in the Sister Nancy and I have been battling a little bit too, physical things, just nuisance. Just you know, some sometimes the littlest things can get in your way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, let's all stand together this morning and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are here today because of all that you've done for us already. Lord, you, you, you made a way where there was no way. You hung between heaven and earth. There as you hung between heaven and earth, you purchased our salvation. We, we, we are, are here today because of that. Lord, before they hung you on the cross, your body Meat. Stripes were placed upon your body. They are for the healing of the nations and the healing of our body. Lord, we celebrate all that you are for us and all that you mean to us. We ask you, Lord, to lift us up right now. Increase our faith. Every name that we've got on today, we bring before you as we need. We thank you for the good reports. We thank you for the wonderful miracles. The Lord, we're here once again, believing, asking, and expecting to receive for each of these individuals. We bring the blood. We increase our faith.
Father, we just thank you so much for your loving kindness and for your blessings upon us, Lord, this Thanksgiving season. I pray that we will continue to be thankful all year through you, Lord. And we pray, God, that as we bring back a portion of what you blessed us with, that uh, you will use it to further your kingdom. And we know that you do in Jesus' name. Light will shine. 
the Holy Ghost this morning. Father, I ask that you move God upon this place. Move God upon every heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, you know every need. And I know, God, that there's healing. I know that there's deliverance through your word and through obedience. Your word said that obedience is greater than sacrifice. So, God, I'm obedient today in the preaching of your word. Bless it, God. Pierce every need. Pierce every heart. Pierce every circumstance with the healing and the peace of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The glory, the glory, the magnificence, the majesty, the glory of this latter house. It, the, the, the word glory, amen, in the Hebrew, it literally translates uh, as the manifestation of, of God's presence. Yes. That's what the glory of God is. It's the presence of God. God said it, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It's the presence of God. Hallelujah. The glory of the latter house of this, of this latter house shall be greater than the former. You see right now, church, I want y'all to realize uh, that God is doing something. Uh, you yeah. may not realize it. Uh, you may say, oh, woe is me. Uh, oh, I'm hurting today. Uh, oh, I'm barely making it. Uh, amen. But God is on the throne. Uh, uh -huh. And God is a moving God. Uh, and God is moving. Uh, even though we don't even know it. We don't realize it. But I'm here to declare it to you. God is in control and he's moving. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking this morning corporately, but I'm also speaking individually. I'm going to break it down here in just a minute. Because today's message is entitled, Getting Up to the Gutter. Getting up to the gutter. Amen. But corporately speaking, brother, God's saying the former. Amen. The former. The glory of this latter house. He's talking about today, right now. This latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, saith Brother Ken Lewis, no. Uh, saith Brother Bill Sanders, no. Uh, saith Brother Ron Fisher, no. Uh, amen. Thus saith the Lord. Thus yes, saith the Lord. Uh, the glory of the latter is going to be greater than the former. Yes. What are you talking about, Brother Ken? What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. God said that in the latter days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. God's doing a work. We're no longer a man the former. But Brother Pastor Bill, God's moving us into the latter. God said it's the latter. It's the last days. It's the end times. Amen. I poured out of my spirit. Your old men are going to dream dreams and your young men are going to see visions. Amen. And it's going to be more glorious. His presence is going to be stronger. His presence uh, in this church, in this house, is going to be greater. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace. In this place. Right here in this place. Not the place down the street. Not the place in Granbury. Not the place in Stephenville. But Brother God said in this place. In this place. Why do you think God sent me here? He sent me here with this word that in this place. You see church. Revival starts in a house of prayer. Amen. Revival will never start. Uh, amen. Unless there's a praying people. Uh, unless the people uh, are seeking God. Uh, unless God finds uh, a praying church. Uh, a praying people. Uh, and brother, there's prayer warriors in this church. Amen. I get phone calls almost every day. Pray. 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 I want you to know today that God is hearing those prayers. Amen. Yes. Amen. And he said that this house is going to be a house of peace. A house of peace. Yes. A house of refuge. A house of healing. A house of hope. It's a peace that passes all understanding. 
God. Oh God, I don't know why. I've got cancer. I don't know why. My sister Barbara is sick. But I know this. That God is a God of peace. He's greater than any circumstance. He's greater than any disease. He's greater than any stroke. Amen. He's greater than any pain. Amen. That you may have. Amen. I'm looking for a sister. Amen. I think it's this one right here. Amen. Are you in pain, sister? Hallelujah. Glory. Come with me just for a minute. Just for a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I rebuke pain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I rebuke it, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pain, you have no place. Pain, you have no authority. Pain, you have no power. And in Jesus' name, I command pain to leave in Jesus' name. Pain, loose her and don't come back. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, it has to go. Sister, rejoice that God has set you free from your pain. Hallelujah. Woo! It's going to be a house of peace. Yes. Glory. Let's look at David. Real quick, let's look at David. And I know I'm looking for a clock. I know that time is of the essence. But let's look at David. Amen. 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 Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. Turn in your Bible, if you would, please, to 2 Samuel. <clears throat> See, God has stuck in my mind the latter and the former. The latter and the former. The latter and the former. See, because what God's speaking in my heart is you're never going to be the same. You're never going to be the same. Amen. The way you were is not the way you are. Or you're going to be. The, the, the circumstances that besieged you before are changing after today. Amen. Because of His Word. Amen. This Word is able to build you up. It's able to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Amen. This Word is able to save you. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 5. Uh, verse 1. Then came all the tribes of Israel unto to David. You see, there were 42 kings of Israel. 42 kings and one queen. David was the second one. Saul was the first one. Reigned for 40 years. David reigned for 40 years. Amen. This was in the United Kingdom. Before the divided kingdom, when ten tribes went south and two tribes, Benjamin and Judah, went north. But this was back before that all happened. David was king over, or God wanted to install David as king over all Israel. Amen. Then came all the tribes. Then implies that David had gone through something. David had gone through something. Is there anybody here that's going through something? Anybody here like me that's been through something? Anybody going through something today? See, that was the former. That was David's former. God said, I got something better. I got something different. I'm taking you to the ladder. God said, you ain't going to have to do it alone. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Let me stop camp out right there just for a minute. Brother, Hebron was a strategic city. Hebron was in the crossroads. Amen. It was, it was in the crossroads. It was just like, like this aisle going up right here and this aisle going right here out this door or right here in the middle was Hebron. Right in the crossroads. Amen. You see, there's a lot of people that are in the crossroads. A lot of people. They don't know where I'm going. They don't know one day I'm over here and one day I'm over here and one day I might go over here. 
But you see, God's telling you today the straightest way, narrow is the gate. That leadeth unto life, and few there will be that find it. Brother, there's a lot of churches that are in the crossroads. Uh, amen. Uh, they're in the crossroads. Uh, and, and you know, I'm not saying that the, necessarily corporately speaking that the crossroads is a bad place to be, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of churches don't even make it to the crossroads. <laughs> they're just dead. But there's a lot of them that are in the crossroads. And God's saying, turn your back on the former. We're moving on to the latter. I'm taking you out of Hebron and I'm moving you into Jerusalem. Amen. Because that's what he said to David. Turn, if you would, just a couple of chapters over to the right. Amen. Uh, I believe it's in 1 Chronicles in chapter 12. I believe. I'm going to read this to you because I think it's important. I'm going to start reading in verse 23. And these are the numbers. 1 Chronicles 12 and 23. And these are the numbers of the bands uh, that were ready, armed to the war, uh, and came to David, to Hebron, uh, to, the, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were 6,800 ready armed to the war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the way, 7,100. Of the children of Levi, uh, 4,600. Of Jehodiah was the leader of the Amorites, and with him were 3,000 and 700 of Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and of the father's house, 20 and two captains, and of the children of Benjamin, the, the kindred of Saul, 3,000, for hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the word of the house of Saul, and of the children of Ephraim, 20,000 and 800 mighty men of valor, famous throughout the house of their fathers, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 which were expressed by name to come and to, take, to make David king, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times uh, amen they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do the hearts of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment of Zebulon such as went forth to battle expert in war with all instruments of war 50,000 which to keep rank they were not of double heart and of Naphtali a thousand captains and with them with with shield and spear thirty and seven thousand and of the Danites expert in war twenty and eight thousand and six hundred and of Asher such as went forth to battle ex expert in war forty thousand and on the other side of of Jordan, of the Reubenites, and of the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, and hundred and twenty thousand, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king and there and there they were with David three days eating and drinking for their brethren had prepared for them. Amen. Let me go back real quick. God sent reinforcements Hebron to David for one man. One man because he said I'm moving you forward. I'm going from the latter from the former to the latter. I'm moving you from Hebron all the way to Jerusalem. Yeah. Now let's read on. I'm back in 2 Samuel chapter 5 in verse 2. Also when time passed when Saul was king over us that was he that led us 
out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. Amen. Jesus was 30 years old when he began his ministry. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. David had been in Hebron for seven and a half years. Seven and a half years struggling. Amen. Struggling. And then God said, I'm moving you. In verse 6, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites. Now the Jebusites were, were giants in the land at the time. And, and they had no respect at all for the Israelites. They, they laughed at them. They mocked them. And they said, you can't come in here. You can't beat us. You see, that's how the devil is. Come on. That's how the devil is. The devil will tell you that you're a defeated foe, that you don't have any power, that you have to succumb, that you can't do it, uh, you, you're too sick to do it, but God's saying that you can. Amen. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. You see, the devil is saying that uh, you can't do it. Uh, the devil's saying give up. Uh, the devil's saying it's too late. Uh, amen. But God's saying, uh, well, wait a minute. It's, I'm just getting started. Uh, well, brother, I'm too old. Uh, no, you're not. Uh, the Bible says let no man despise thy age. Amen. Yes. It's not just talking about the young. That's also talking about the old. Yes. I'm 60 years old. And I'm just getting started. Yeah. You may be 70 years old, 72 years old, but God's saying, don't think about it. Uh, hey man, just get on board uh, because we're moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, in verse 7, nevertheless, I should have titled this message, nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless, oh, Brother Bill, I can't come to church today. I don't like the way Sister So and So fixes her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, come anyway. Come on. <laughs> Brother, I can't do it. I just don't feel like it. It's too hard. Nevertheless, persevere. Persevere. Well, Brother, I'm, it's too cold. It's too rainy. I don't have gas money. Nevertheless, come to church. Yeah. I'll give you gas money. Come on. Amen? Amen. Amen? Nevertheless, when Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Amen, and it was, this was before the cross, and He fell down, and He cried out to God, and He said, God, if you can, take this cup from me, O oh God. But nevertheless, Amen. not my will, but Thy will be done. Yes. Nevertheless, he offered not an excuse. He opened not his mouth. But as a lamb that's led before the slaughter is dumb, he opened not his mouth. Amen. Nevertheless, oh God, I'm going anyway. Yes. Nevertheless, God, I may be sick and I may be tired. And the, and the di diagnosis may be grim, but nevertheless, God, oh, I'm not turning back. I'm pressing for the mark yeah. of the prize of the high calling of God. Hallelujah. I'm laying aside every weight and the sin which so, which so easily besets me. And I'm running with patience the race that is set before me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Oh, and blessed is the man who trusts in Him. We sang that song a while ago. But God saying to my heart, Oh, taste and see. Try me. Test me. Try me. Taste and see that I'm good. God is good. All the time. Even in Hebron, He's good. Nevertheless, David took, amen, 
You know, I never even saw that till right now. David took. Yeah, he did. Brother, he didn't pussyfoot around. Come on. He didn't beg. Come on. He didn't plead. Yes. He didn't say, oh, let me, let, 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 can you, can you help, can you, can you give it to me? Brother, he took it. Come on. He walked in. He said, I'm going. And I, I, he had a made up mind. Amen. 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 God's speaking my heart right now. He's saying, let faith arise. Yeah. Let faith arise. Yeah. Let your enemies be scattered. Yeah. Let faith arise. Yeah. Amen. We got to exercise our faith. Yeah. Amen. It's a muscle. If you don't exercise it, it atrophies. It dries up. Amen. It gets hard and it gets useless. God's saying, exercise your faith. Yeah. Woo! saying that mountain be thou removed yeah. and cast into the sea with the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. It will happen. Yeah. Amen. You know, there's something about a mustard seed. I didn't wear mine today, Sister Rita. But I've got one that I wear around my neck. It's the tiniest seed. You can take a mustard seed, you can put it in the ground, and you can take a boulder a boulder, and you can put on top of it. And that mustard seed will find a way. It'll go up and until it reaches the boulder, and then it'll turn, and it'll go to the side. Amen. And then it'll go up. Hallelujah. That's how our faith has got to be. Our faith has to be like a mustard seed. Amen. When the going gets tough, and the tough get going. When you feel resistance of that boulder that's weighing you down, brother, go to the side. Amen. And find the sun. And go up. Hallelujah. Oh. David took the stronghold of Zion. The same as the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul. Do you feel me this morning, church? Do you feel me this morning? David said, whosoever. God is no respecter of persons, church. Amen. He is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care if you're black. He doesn't care if you're white. He doesn't care if you're brown. He doesn't care if you're male, if you're female, if you're old, if you're young, if you're fat, if you're skinny. God doesn't care. Amen. He is no respecter of persons. Whosoever will get it up to the gun. Amen. Now, I'm not going to preach on the guttermost to the uttermost, which I could, but I'm not. But let me explain this to you. This is what God showed me. Right outside, see, Jerusalem is a fortified city. It has a wall around it. And back in those times, it was a strong city. They had their own water supply. That's what made them so strong. They could walk up in there for an indefinite period of time because they had an underground water supply. Okay, it's called the Pool of Gihon, or the, it's the Pool of Gihon, but it's the, it goes through the Tunnel of Siloam. Outside of the city walls, it was 1,749 feet long. So if you go from the, from the, the Tower of Siloam, which in Luke 24, you can read it fell, it killed 18 people when it fell. But from that point to the cistern was 1,749 feet. Okay. It went down into the ground. It just so happens that there's 33 steps going down into that cistern to that water supply. Now remember, water is life-giving. Water is the water of life. It's a well that's bringing up within our soul. It represents the power, the power, the power of the Holy Ghost. It was 33 steps that they had to go down. They didn't, if they walked across the, the, just the top of the ground, they missed it. They had to go down 33 steps. That represents, it's a topology of Christ Jesus. But they had to go down, down. 
Amen. God's telling me today that, remember earlier I was preaching about a praying church, there's power in prayer. God only sparks a revival in churches that, that's based on prayer. Well, in order to access the water, you got to go down first. Come on. You got to go down. Come on. And I'm talking about down on your knees on. in prayer. I'm talking about prostrating yourself out before God and saying, God, I can't do it. Oh, God, I'm helpless. But God, I'm calling. I'm calling on you. God sent 347,000 men to David to deliver him from Hebron under Jerusalem. God is not going to leave you alone. I'm telling you today that there's more with you than that there is against you. There's 12 legions of angels at your back and talk. Spiritually speaking. Amen. Amen. You need deliverance. You need healing. Woo! Call on God. Yes. And believe. Amen. You have resources. Right here. Right now. Amen. They're available to you. That's it. Lord, whosoever getteth up to the gutter, David said, okay, men, you prayer warriors, you men of war, you men that are equipped with the shield of faith, uh, with the helmet of salvation, uh, amen, uh, with the sword, uh, with the sword uh, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, uh, get ready. Yes. We're going down. They went down into that cistern. They went through that viaduct. 1,749 feet underground. It was dark. It was dreary. It was damp. Amen. It was, it was a tunnel is what they went through. But then when they reached the end of the tunnel, God said, that's far enough. Uh, amen. You've been in the former Amen. You've been there long enough. Uh, you trans you're trans you've transversed uh, through uh, the darkness uh, uh, long enough. Uh, he said, look up. Uh, and when they did, they saw that tunnel of, of Siloam going up. They came up into the middle of the city. They took the Jebusites. They destroyed them. And they took, they took Jerusalem by force. And they established David king over Israel. You know why? Because it wasn't, of course, in Matthew chapter 2 you can read, Matthew chapter 1 you can read, of the lineage of Jesus Christ. It goes all the way back through David. That's one reason. But God did it for another reason. God did it for you and for me. Yeah. For our belief. Amen. Our belief. We can read it. Church, this is a historical document. Yes, it is. It's not fiction. Yeah. It's non-fiction. Yeah. Yeah. It's a historical document. It actually happened. Yes. Believe it. They did it. So can we. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His principles never change. He put it in the book so that we could, as a resource, so that we could draw. So that right now, on February, uh, uh, November the 27th, amen, of 2022, we can read it and we can say, look what God did for David. He brought him from the former to the latter. I'm almost done. Whoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind and that are hated of David's soul. He hated them. He eschewed them. Amen. That's how we have to be with sin. We have to eschew evil. We have to despise it. Amen shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David 
built round about from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. Oh. Amen. Church, that's the plan. That's it. That's the plan. Amen. See, God spoke to my heart, her heart earlier when I was telling you about my testimony. God literally spoke to my heart. And I, I don't say that lightly. Trust me, I know y'all don't know me that well, but I don't say that lightly. Uh, if, when God speaks to my heart, if I tell you God speaks to my heart, I mean God speaks to my heart. God spoke to my heart. He said, I have a plan and I have a purpose. I have a plan and I have a purpose. God's plan for us is to accept His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross, who shed His blood, as Pastor Ed spoke earlier, for us. I mean, past, not Pastor Ed, Pastor Bill, I'm sorry, brother. please forgive me. Pastor Bill spoke earlier. And to accept Him as our personal Lord and Savior. And to spend an eternity in glory with Him. That's God's plan. That's His plan. God's purpose for us is to live victorious. To live victorious. Amen, sister. Come on in. To live victorious. I was walking online. Hallelujah. And I saw you with this lady. Hallelujah. Go up there. Hallelujah. And I couldn't walk with my knee. Hallelujah. Woo Glory. <laughs> See how God is.